In this video, we're going to be trying out the File System Access API, and I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description below. So the first thing we can do is show an open file picker to the user so that they can select a file, and then the application can read and write to that file. We can only execute this function on user interaction, so we'll start off by creating a button, and then we'll run some code when this button is clicked. So we'll just create that function. And in here we can call window.showOpenFilePicker. So now we can click the Open File button. And as you can see, we're able to select a file. So this function is going to return a file handle. So we'll just put that into a variable. Then we can use filehandle.kind to determine the type of file. So this could be a file or a directory. So when we select a file, you can see it says file in the console. Whereas if we select a directory, and it doesn't seem to be letting me select a directory for some reason, which is unfortunate. So I'm not sure what's going on there. So anyway, we'll move on. So to get the data in the file, we have to use filehandle.getFile. So as you can see, this will return a file object with all the data. So we have the name of the file, the size of the file, the type of the file, and also some information about when the file was last modified. So if we want to read the text from the file, we have to use filedata.text. And actually the file data object implements the blob interface, which means you can use functions like .json, etc. So anyway, we'll just log this text. And as you can see now when we select the file, all our JavaScript code is getting printed into the console. So we'll now move on to saving to the file. So what I've done here is I've added in a text area. And when we read the data from the file, I just put that data into a text area. So now when we open a file, we're able to edit that file directly from the browser. So what I've done here is created another button for saving the file. So I've just moved the declaration of the file handle to be global. So to save our file, we need to create a writable stream. And we can get that from the file handle by calling create writable. So now we can write to this stream using stream.write. And in here, we have to pass in a blob of the data we are writing. So in our case, that's just text area dot inner text. And then to finish saving the file, we have to actually close the stream. So now when we open a file, we can type in some text and click save. And as you can see, this data is replicated on our local file system. So now we'll move on to showing a save dialog. So we'll create another button for saving as. In our JavaScript file, we'll create this function. So what we'll do is we'll update our current handle to be for a new file. And to get this new file, we'll use window.show save file picker. And then the rest of the process is the exact same. So I'll just call the existing save function that we have. So we'll save our changes and then refresh. So this time when we load up our JavaScript file, we'll also have the option of clicking save as. So now we can call this main2.js. And as you can see, that new file has been created on our system. So we can proceed to code in this new file. For example, we'll set the body background color to be light blue. So we'll hit save. And now you can see if we open our HTML file and load up our main2.js instead. And then we refresh the page. Now, as you can see, the background is blue. So the final thing I want to show you is that you can pass options into the open file picker. So this allows us to specify the various file extensions that are accepted. So for example, we can accept Python files. And then this line prevents us from changing the accepted file extensions in the dialog box. And then finally, this line allows us to select multiple files. So now if we open a file. So as you can see, we're not able to select any files because I don't have any Python files on my computer because JavaScript is a better language. So unfortunately, that means we'll have to end the tutorial here. And I just found out that there is a separate show directory picker function. So anyway, all of this is on the documentation link in the description. So anyway, that's going to be the end of this tutorial. Special thanks to the top Patreon supporters who help make these videos possible.